fans, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Yes, it's Patreon request time again. Which explains why I'm dressed in all this and not my usual shirt and waistcoat. You see, 2016 was an Olympic year. And a bumper year for Team Great Britain in the medals table. Also, this year's Summer Olympics was somewhat of a swan song for the Jamaican runner Usain Bolt. But today, we're casting our minds back to another Jamaican Olympic tale. Namely, that of the bobsled Cool Runnings and her crew. Released in 1993, Cool Runnings is the tale of a would-be sprinter, his friends, their coach, and a dream of Olympic glory. After Doris Bannock crashes out of the 100 meter trials, he convinces his friends to join up with him in a bobsledding team, and a former Olympic cheat to act as their coach. But can this motley band of seeming no-hopers overcome the odds? There's only one way to find out. So let's get out on the track and ride the ice with the Olympic oddity that is... Cool Running! Meet Doris Bannock and his wacky friend, Sanka Coffee. Ah yes, Sanka Coffee. Posted a legendary time at the World Championships in Dublin this year, faster than even three-time soapbox derby champion Ronnie Beck. Bannock is trying for the Olympic sprint team. But oh dear. Ooh, total wipeout. Reminds me of this one time at secondary school. But our hero isn't finished just yet. You see, Doris here, he's the son of one Ben Bannock. An Olympic champion gold medal sprinter. And so, that's where Doris Bannock has a crazy idea to find this guy and bring his idea at last to fruition. After convincing a cold-fearing Sanka, we find out what became of Irv Blitzer. Doris is determined. I'm Ben Bannock's son. And Irv Blitzer joins the fray. And when initial recruitment falls rather flat, and let's face it, bobsledding is a very dangerous sport. Though I thought there would have been a few more daredevils in Jamaica of all places. Two latecomers, Yul Brenner and Junior Bevel, round out our team. And so, training begins. Now when our teams start out, they are complete novices. But through the power of montage... They ascend the heady heights of... partial neophytes. But Mr. Coolidge, Jamaican Olympic head, can't spare the $20,000. Cue another montage of them attempting to raise the money. Which is made moot as Junior sold his car and made the fee easily. And off to Calgary. Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Lovely place. Home of the wrestling dynasty, the Hart Foundation, don't you know? But they're not in this film, so let's move on. Blitzer secures the sled, and our boys are in business. The next day, Doris learns the truth about Irv Blitzer. What was it that led to Irv Blitzer's fall from grace? Well, you see, at the 1972 Winter Olympics, and behind the back of his coach, Kurt Hemphill, Blitzer hid weights in the front of his sled to make it go faster down the track. Dangerous idea, if you ask me. But he was found out, stripped of his medals, and retired to Jamaica in disgrace. A second training montage smooths the way to the first qualifying time. 
And wouldn't you know, it's under a minute. But that's not good enough for a third official with a grudge against Blitzer. So Irv appeals Jamaica's disqualification in person. And so, the re-qualified team head out at the 15th Winter Olympics. And while day one goes about as well as you'd expect, it's only because Doris has Switzerland on the brain. So on day two, our team embrace their roots. And it works. Which leads to another House of Love top tip. Always be yourself. Even if you can be Batman, that guy has issues. I mean, who turns down a Green Lantern ring? Come on! But there's a mechanical problem on the third day, and our team come unstuck. Luckily, our boys are unscathed, and carry cool runnings to the finish. So that was cool runnings. But as with any story that's based on real events, there was a lot of dramatic license used in this movie. So let's now hand over to our sports editor, Brian Monkfish, for the real story of the Jamaican bobsled team. The real Jamaican four-man team were Air Force sprinters, and the coach character was entirely fictional, as the team had many coaches and trainers. And don't believe the hype about them being looked down on. The real team were treated as equals the whole time. And while the crash did happen on the final run, it was the fourth run on the second day, not the third on the third day. And there was much less clapping as I recall. Of course, Jamaica did actually have a two-man sled team that year as well, as two of the four-man team competed in the two-man event. Thanks, Brian! Brian Monkfish, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for him. Now, getting back to Cool Runnings itself... You know something? I'm gonna put this one into the House of Love. As sports movies go, much as I would know, not really having seen all that many, this does seem a little... by the numbers. The training montage, the heartfelt speech, the plucky underdogs, the sinister, better team, the judge with a grudge, it's all here. And yet, it's safe enough, if not that predictable. The characters, mostly played by a cast who are very much toning down the patois dialect, are believable and relatable. From wide-eyed dreamer and second-generation athlete Doris, to the improbably named pushcart driver Sanka Coffee, which is an actual brand of US coffee, if you didn't know, to tough guy with a heart of gold Yul Brenner, presumably a play on famously bald actor Yul Brynner, to crouching tiger Junior Bevel, to Irv Blitzer, the washed up ex-sledder who's coaxed into coaching this bunch of seeming no-hopers into actually competing on the international stage. And they do have chemistry. The flow of this movie is straightforward, we get from an incident at the start, to the idea of bobsledding with sprinters, and into training, raising the fee, training some more, and the big match at the end. And it's all safe and inoffensive stuff, as befits a Disney movie. And I have to mention that Hans Zimmer, who would go on to become so very famous for his big scores for much more famous movies, scored this little movie, much as one could. Overall then, it's rather forgettable, and somewhat formulaic, I would argue. But Cool Runnings is a good film. And that about wraps it up for this episode, and for 2016 in general. I'll be back next year, with a few more episodes to round out the series. But till then, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and great entertainment through both. So long, folks!